We trust the lamb, not the donkey or the elephant. I saw some Bible study, small group curriculum that recently came out. And the way it was sold was, hey, let us take the heat, Pastor. You don't want to to have to deal with these issues. So use our curriculum in small groups. And that gives some distance between the pastor and these hot button divisive issues. So help us think about how much churches should participate directly. Uh, I mean, you've given us a whole layout here of what the Bible says about these issues. So would a pastor be smart to preach about these issues? Or is this more for individual Christians? Yeah, um, that's a complex issue. And let me say up front, I'm, I'm not a pastor. I'm not ordained. Uh, I'm, I'm an academic. Um, and so, and I, but of course I'm an academic who has taught and written for pastors for decades. And I really feel for pastors at this historical moment, uh, because Christians are, are, very partisan and many are opinionated and many get angry with their pastors if they seem to represent a different political position. First of all, I think, uh, and this will be controversial to some of our listeners, I think we need to acknowledge and accept, and actually I embrace the fact that I live in a democratic, secular, uh, you know, pluralistic society. And I'm also someone who thinks that Christians ought to get involved in the political process in order to be in the public square, to convince and persuade fellow citizens toward a certain behavior. But where it gets tricky is I don't think it's the role of the church or Christians to coerce our fellow citizens to act like Christians. And I have a couple of quotes from, uh, well, one from C.S. Lewis, who he kind of makes this point by saying, well, I would really hate it if a Muslim, you know, applied Sharia law and I couldn't enjoy my glass of wine at the end of the day. (laughs) It's kind of a cute quote. And then Martin Lloyd-Jones, who was, you know, mid 20th century Welsh preacher said, essentially, you know, God doesn't want us to make non-Christians act like Christians. We want, uh, God wants us to <laughs> to encourage people to become Christians. And I'm of the school, maybe I'll call it my, you know, a longtime friend of, of the recently departed Tim Keller, uh, who has been criticized by certain people in the church for his winsomeness as he, as he engaged culture. I mean, Tim did not compromise his views. I mean, he he was a controversial person in, you know, secular New York, and, and he took a lot of heat and held some very unpopular views. But nonetheless, he, he understood that everybody's created in the image of God, and you needed to persuade people rather than coerce them, because coercion often is counterproductive anyway. I'm Patrick. Thanks for watching this video. If you're passionate about ending tribalism in the church and giving Jesus your allegiance, you're not alone. We have a podcast and a book. They're both called Truth Over Tribe. You can download the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can buy the book on Amazon. I hope you'll check them out.